Hello Trade Ideas users, Chris Varley here from the Sport and Education team. We're going to do a video going over our formula editor. Uh, some of the ins and outs and the, what we can and cannot do with it. So uh, very quickly, those that are not familiar, our formula editor is able to reference short code within our system that refers to filters. There are no alerts on this and you are able to use C operators to string those codes together within the system to create your own custom filters. Uh, what it is not is a code compiler. So for example, we do not have EMA data. You cannot build an EMA formula. Uh, you cannot change time periods on things. So for example, our RSI filters use a 14 period. Uh, you cannot change the period on that. Uh, our volume filters, you know, our volume in one minute, you can't change it into a volume 30 second, so on and so forth. Uh, things you can do with this in addition to what I have mentioned you can do, uh, there are some filters that do not exist within the top list by default. For example, our one minute volume filter. You can use that short code to enter into the back end of our system and create that within your top list for yourself. So we're going to go over some of these ins and outs uh, and how to break these down, help documents, our user's guide, so on and so forth. So first thing I want to do is I want to bring over our user's guide. There we are. And we can see here on the user's guide a little widget that we can bring us down and we will look for our custom formula right here. And when we do that, that will open this page right here. I want to scroll back to the top of that here and it gives a rundown of many of the things that we're going to discuss here as far as the formula editor goes, where it is found, some of the items that can be done with it, how we function and use those items, uh, things like graphics and so on and so forth for these different filters. And, and as we move down, we come here to what we call our account management section for the custom formula. So there are two places the custom formula lives. You can do it within the software or you could do it within our web page on the account management as well. There are links for those there. Also within here is a help PDF and the short codes for all of our filters. Within the help PDF, there are gonna be some examples and some short codes that exist within the system, but they're not actual filters built into the software. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and dive into those right now. And so we'll start with the help PDF. That's what that will look like if you open it. Let's scroll back to the top on this for me here. There we go. And this just goes over a whole overview. There's a table of contents here that you can use as well to your advantage to jump around within it. It goes over the fact that you can have up to 100 of these custom filters. They all have a U designation, so we can see U0 all the way up to U99 representing the 100 numbers that would exist within there. And as you can see, this works much like our regular filter set with those colors that are on there. It goes into the description of units, the sources, uh, discuss a little bit about what I talked about with topless, how some of them don't automatically have some of the filters that alert windows do, for example, our change one minute or our volume one minute percent, and that we can add those as custom formulas on the back end here. I'll go over that in just a moment. Uh, we talk about different formats here, uh, where we want to go out on that decimal place for rounding purposes. We have different graphics that are here. So for example, I'd like to showcase here. We bring over this top list. You can see the graphic that is here within that top list going this way. We can take that graphic off as we wanted to and see how that's ungrafficked. Uh, there's also the graphic of the cone. If we go into the configure here and I bring up our volume today percent and I show that column, press OK, press OK. Uh, this is the cone that's right there and that's what that would refer to with that. Uh, stocks that have done, you know, 100% of the volume or more, you'll see it starts to, you know, grow that cone out. It starts just as this black. As it moves towards 100, the blue grows in. As it moves into 100 and past, we get this pink that comes in like that. And that's how that cone will work. Let me bring that back over to another screen. Here we go. There are pre-existing ones that we can just simply stick into this if we need. Talk about different numbers and null expressions. Here are your operators from C programming language. If you're not familiar with C programming language for these operators, you can do a short web search. You don't need to be overly versed in these just to understand what each of these icons means and how it would impact stringing the short codes together. And then we get to other data points, as I mentioned before, that are not filters built within the system, but that we could use, for example, most recent close. So that would be the price of yesterday or today's close, uh, the expected open, seconds after the open, we have days of the week, today's high, today's low, 
pre-market high, pre-market low, uh, so on and so forth. I'm not going to bore you to death with all these different items that are within here. You have the actual code over here, and then you have the description of what the codes are doing over here as well for you. Uh, as we continue on, we'll get into the different functions here, and then some examples of how we can build out different codes. Uh, these are great examples. I'm not an expert at building these short codes myself or building these custom formulas myself, but I often, when I'm trying to troubleshoot or help, I refer to these codes to help me build those out. Um, there is some expected user responsibility with this. Uh, there are some users that have gone on to extremely complex codes and it's difficult for anybody to look back in on someone else's code with no frame of reference whatsoever when there's lots of brackets, booleans, if then statements to try to go through and debug those. So you have to be your own debugger, especially the more complex that you get with these kinds of items, but they're here for you to use as a tool. We go into some different items, for example, comparing volume. While we can't compare candles, we have volume in different time frames, both on percent basis and we have those shares. Uh, if we come back up here real quick, as I mentioned before, in these codes here, we got volume amount of shares traded in the current, you know, the rolling one minute, rolling five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and thirty minutes. So we can compare those time frames. Uh, and in an example of this here, we would be comparing. This is the current rolling five minute and the current rolling minute, and that would compare the stock's last minute. Uh, to the previous four minutes because obviously the one minute is part of that five minutes So it's just a workaround that we can compare volume and again while not necessarily candles We can compare it in those time frames like that uh, We could take those and put them into different ways whether it be a ratio or it be a percentage all that goes on in here We talk about bullion expressions and true and false statements where we can say, you know, if something is equal to something else it's a true statement and we only want to see stocks that were to look like that with that true statement using a one as the minimum value in the filter to return true statements uh, zero signifying a false statement instead if we didn't want to see stocks that met that true statement filter codes was another uh, mention that we had here as far as the help documents go and this is going to have every filter that we offer to build scans from already within the software, the short codes that they have for building out those, and the units that they use, and of course the name and what the icon looks like over here. And you'll see again, uh, these icons all have specific prints on them versus the custom filter icons where the U designation with the number afterwards with that. So I wanna go ahead and shrink this down for a moment. And we're gonna get into building some codes within the software how to verify and so on and so forth with those. So if we come to tools and we look for formula editor there on the menu bar, we get a window that looks something like this here. Let me expand that out a little bit for us. If you do not see formula un editor under tools, it means you're on an older version of the trade idea software. You can either upgrade, you don't want to upgrade for whatever various reasons that people do not like to upgrade for. You could use from the guide here, as I mentioned before, custom formula section, if you click on that, that will bring you to this page here. And if you were to scroll down, you'd find those help documents here as well as in the user's guide, and you'd be able to create a new formula with that button there. So we'll swap back to that for the time being. And within here, we can see our different codes that we already have built in. And if we wanna create a new one, and we'd simply select from the U designations that are not currently used to build that new one. Uh, down here, it will tell us if this is valid for top list and alert windows. We name it in the description field. I mentioned before decimal points as the format, and we talked about the graphics, whether it be the bar range or the cone for the percentages. You don't have to have a graphic. It's entirely up to you. Over here, we would give it a unit, a percent, a dollar, a ratio, true, false, right? Those are the different units that we would have. And then we go ahead and save afterwards. Now, on these here, you can always hit this help button and it'll give you some related documents to the custom formulas that it's reading within there or the short codes that it's reading within there, uh, just to give you an idea of where the code comes from and the filters that it could be used in. For this example here, let's go back to the instructions and we talked about comparing the last minute to the last four minutes. 
I could go ahead and I can copy and highlight that here. This is going to work in a ratio. So if I copy that out and I go ahead and delete what's in here from its preloaded, I can go ahead and paste that in. And you'll see it tells me it's valid for alert windows and topless. We're going to give it its name. Pair. Last minute. Two. Last four, whoop, four minutes. And we did say this is a ratio, so I'm going to fix that out right there. We're going to leave that as a double digit on the decimal point there. We don't need a graphic. And if I go ahead and press save, we have now created that. And it has actually taken over my prior one minute here. And then go ahead and click that U32. This is what we were intending to do originally. We'll press save. And that now has designated that as U32. Going to head, go ahead and open a top list here so that we can see that in effect. We come to the search. You'll always find your custom filters all the way at the bottom here. However, you can also search it within the bar here. So we just did compare. So as I type compare, we can see here current compare last minutes to last four minute it's in a ratio uh, you can actually see that it uh, duplicated it here for me based on u0 on the little error that i made there we'll go ahead and fix that in a moment and go back over how we can do that so u32 i can show that column got some other columns in here i'd like to get rid of for the moment and let's just make sure we look at some stocks that are trading a little bit so that when we look at the ratios, we don't get any blank ratios here. Uh, we'll go with the $5 base and we'll just make sure that we're trading a few shares that are there. I go ahead and press OK. You will now see from this top list, compare last minute to last four minutes abbreviated.